Hi, my name is Andrew Long, and I'm a senior data scientist at Presenius Medical Care. Today, I'm going to give you a preview of the 90-minute workshop I'll be leading at ODSC West. It's titled Healthcare NLP with a Doctor's Bag of Notes. I just wanted to give a quick overview, kind of motivating uh, this, this workshop. Uh, I work for a company called Presenius Medical Care. It provides dialysis um, to about 200,000 patients in the U.S. And, and we have lots of models in production as, as, part, of, uh, as part of my job as a data scientist. Uh, many of them are related to uh, negative outcomes um, for patients. Uh, and when I was going to build these predictive models, uh, what I discovered is that the clinical notes from the nurses and doctors are really valuable. Uh, in fact, I found a document that outlined some of the symptoms that the nurses should be looking for while they're in the clinic. And I realized that about half of these symptoms, we don't collect any numbers on. Um, so for example, chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, uh, sickness, recent falls, headaches, these are all symptoms um, that people experience that you don't actually, um, you can't really measure. You can't put numerical values to them. So as a data scientist, um, we need to figure out a way of how do we capture this information? Uh, and, and one of those ways is through clinical notes. Uh, so the purpose of my workshop really is to uh, add a tool to every uh, data scientist's toolkit about how do we build predictive models uh, that incorporate free text clinical notes. Um, and, and the workshop that I'm giving is, uh, it's focused on clinical uh, NLP, but um, you can also use these techniques uh, in, other, uh, in other tasks as well. Um, but we'll focus on clinical examples. Uh, and what I want to do today uh, is, is just kind of give you an overview of the workshop and, and teach you about one of the techniques. Uh, in particular, during the 90-minute workshop, we're going to, um, it's hands-on, so we're going to use Python and we're going to go line by line on how do you build a predictive model uh, that uses clinical notes uh, to predict hospital 30-day readmission. So this is a common problem that's solved uh, in many hospitals uh, as well as outpatient providers, um, as well as in the insurance business. So um, a lot of different uh, healthcare data scientists are trying to solve this problem, and, and we're going to do it in that 90-minute workshop. Uh, as part of the, the preview today, I want to talk about two elements of this project. Uh, the first one is data. Uh, for this particular project, we're going to use something called the MIMIC-3 data set, uh, and I'll give you a quick overview of that uh, in a minute. And then I'm also going to give you an overview of the machine learning approach that we're going to take. Uh, it's called bag of words classification. And I first wanted to justify uh, why I'm giving a workshop on bag of words. You might say, you know, this is one of those uh, introductory topics for NLP. There's lots of more fancy tools. And, and I agree with you that at ODSC West, there's lots of NLP talks using the fanciest tool. Um, but for this particular workshop that I'm giving, it's targeted at beginners uh, and that have no experience with machine learning. And uh, I really feel like bag of words is a great topic for beginners. It also serves as a really good baseline um, that most people should be used, most data scientists should be using when they start NLP projects. In my experience, I found that bag of words tends to get you most of the performance and many of the fancy tools just kind of get you that extra few percent. So bag of words really can go a far distance and, and I feel like bag of words should be continued to um, be presented at data science conferences um, for those that are just beginning their machine learning uh, adventure. Okay, so let's start with the data set. Um, so this is the data set called MIMIC3. Um, it's basically a really nice data set for uh, patient data. It's about 40,000 patients de-identified de um, from this hospital called Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. It has about 10 years worth of data, uh, and it's really nice that they have de-identified it so we can use it. Um, I don't know how many people are on the call that work in the healthcare industry, but it's really, really hard to find open source healthcare data. Uh, and this is a really nice data source that you can get access to. Um, since it is patient data, you do have to request access and, and go through a few city courses 
um, to get that access. So I've, I've provided a link here um, to the Mimic website that explains what you need to do. Um, but since I started giving talks with the Mimic 3 data set, one of the common questions is, uh, how do I get access? So I, I created this blog post on Torb's data science website, um, which kind of gives you a step-by-step -step, um, process with screenshots on what you need to do to get access to Mimic 3. Um, for, so for those of you that are on the call that would like to join for the workshop, uh, I recommend getting ac requesting access to this data set now, um, since it does take a little while um, for that request to be approved. Um, in case you do not get access to the MIMIC 3 data set before, uh, we, before we go to ODSE West, that's okay. Uh, I will provide an artificial data set, although it will not be clinical data. Um, so I, I think for, for impact-wise, it would be great if you guys got access to the MIMIC 3 data set. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to talk about bag of words classification and just give you uh, the teaser about how this works. Um, and I'm going to talk about it from a theoretical standpoint, um, but when we do go to the workshop uh, in San Francisco, I will show you line by line how do we do this in Python. Uh, so just to give an overview, ideally we'd like to be able to take some string, let's just say it was something very simple, like this patient will likely be readmitted with two exclamation points, We'd like to feed it into a predictive model and output some type of classification score. Uh, and in this case, we're, we're trying to predict, will they be readmitted within 30 days? Um, and the risk score represents their probability. You know, unfortunately, we, it's never this easy, likely be readmitted, um, but just for now, uh, we'll say this is the sentence we're trying to use. Now, the thing is, predictive models do not, at, at the current state today in 2019, they're not able to take a string and just output a number. You actually have quite a few steps um, that are needed to take this string and convert it into numbers. You know, predictive models need numbers uh, before, they can, uh, before they can output your risk score. And in bag of words classification algorithm, there's two different components that you need to convert your string into numbers. Uh, and those are called the tokenizer and the vectorizer. And I just wanna give you a brief overview of what these two um, tools are. The first one is tokenizer. Basically what you can think of the tokenizer as doing is it takes your string and or note and it splits it into tokens. For now, let's just think of tokens as individual words. So for example, when we take this string, it's gonna spit back a list. So I've represented the list with brackets uh, and it has each of these words uh, as an individual token. So B, likely patient readmitted this will. And what you can see right now is that for this tokenizer, which represents bag of words, we've lost the word order uh, for these, the, this sentence. And that's one of the limitations of bag of words, but it still contains a lot of valuable information from individual words. Uh, and then once we have this list of words, we can feed it into something called a vectorizer. You can think of the vectorizer as a way to convert tokens into features or you know variables that represent the different columns of your data set. For bag of words classification, essentially all you do is you create one column for each unique uh, token that's in your, your data set or something we call a corpus. So for example, for this sentence, let's say that these are all the words that are represented. This infection likely hospital B meds patient readmitted in our data set. And for this particular sentence, we'd get a one in this, a one in likely, a one in B, a one in patient, and one in readmitted. But we don't have the words infection, hospital, or meds, so those would be zeros. So that is one way of uh, using our vectorizer to turn our words or tokens into numbers. Now, now that you have an overview of tokenizer and vectorizer, I wanna take a step back and tell you about some of the design decisions that you have to go through. Um, it's not as simple as just saying, I'm gonna use this tokenizer and this vectorizer. There's lots of design decisions that you need to um, come up with uh, for, for this to work in our predictive model. So let's start with the tokenizer. Uh, the first one is how do you wanna pre-process your notes? Uh, and what I mean by pre-process is, is sometimes there's words or tokens or special characters that you want to remove from your particular note. So for example, maybe you don't want to include punctuation. 
because right now readmitted with two exclamation points would be considered as a separate token than readmitted without the exclamation points. So in general, I tend to take these punctuation out, although that is a design decision. Also, uh, capitalization or case uh, is also a design decision that you need to come through. So for example, this with a capital T is gonna be considered differently than this with a lowercase t, unless we do something about it. In general, I like to lowercase all of my words. The other design decision that you have to come up with, or that you have to decide on, is how many words do you use in a particular token? Um, so right now I've been talking about using one word as an individual token, uh, but sometimes you might want to pair two words together and call that an individual token. For example, no complaints uh, you could consider as an individual token. And what that does is it allows you to pick up a little bit of the word order. Uh, and this is important for negation in uh, clinical notes um, because a lot of times nurses or doctors will say, you know, no complaints or no diarrhea or no vomiting. Uh, and so if you can pair that, uh, if you can use a bigrams, which is how you get two words in a, in a token, um, you can pick up some of the negation, but not all of it. Um, so this is called n-grams and the n stands for how many words count in an individual token. And that, and that allows you to kind of combat some of this uh, loss of word order in the bag of words setup. Okay, so let me move on to the design decisions for vectorizer. Uh, the first one is how should you count these tokens? When I went through the example originally, I just said uh, a one for every time this word showed up. Uh, and that kind of falls under this uh, I vectorizer called count vectorization. And this, all it does is simply counts how many times each one of those words uh, happened in your sentence. But if you just use count vectorizer by itself, some of the really common words such as the, the, T-H-E, is gonna result in the most number of counts. Uh, and so that's kind of just representing how often that word would be used, you know. And, and this might not make sense for us in our classification because we might want to uh, take into account how often a particular word shows up across all documents or all notes. Uh, and to do that, you can use a vectorizer called TFIDF vectorizer. And this stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. In simplest ways, you can think of it as counting the number of times each token appears and then dividing it by, in a particular note, and dividing it by the total number of documents in your training corpus where that word appears. Uh, the TFIDF vectorizer is a little more complicated than that, uh, but for simplicity purposes, it helps you normalize your counts to how often those words appear. Some other design decisions that happen is, is which tokens should you use? Uh, and, and this is kind of split into two pieces. One of them is uh, how many tokens should you use? For the scikit-learn representations, it, uh, how many you use tends to be the top, uh, and, you know, top N words that show up. Uh, but another thing that you might need to decide on is should you remove stop words, um, which are some of those really common words that don't really add value to the predictive model. So for example, this and B probably don't need to be words in our predictive model and we could take them out and these are called stop words. Um, so that's just the overview of how bag of words classification works using a tokenizer and a vectorizer. Um, for the remaining of today's talk, I just want to give you an overview of the workshop uh, and, and what will be included uh, in the particular 90-minute workshop. Uh, I will go into a brief overview of the MIMIC3 data set. I kind of told you what it is, but I'll go into it in a little more detail and show you some of the different data sets. Uh, and then because this is a beginner workshop, uh, I forgot to say this is a beginner workshop for um, people that want to learn how to use Python. So basically on every slide uh, of the presentation, we will go line by line on how to do it in Python. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is how do we prepare our data for a machine learning project? In particular, we're going to uh, learn how to, how and why we should split our data set uh, into something called a training, a validation, and a test data set. And this allows us to uh, make sure that our models are robust and we can take them out into the real world and use them. Uh, another problem that we're going to handle is that 
Uh, in most clinical machine learning tasks, you're trying to identify a rare event, uh, and this results in a problem called imbalanced data, uh, and we will talk about a few techniques on how do we take care of that imbalanced data. Um, and then uh, we'll spend most of the 90-minute workshop on the bag of words uh, in, in two parts. One of them is I'll show a few different techniques for pre-processing the unstructured notes. Uh, and then once we uh, create our bag of words um, data set, I'll show you how to build a simple predictive model uh, using scikit-learn in the Python uh, environment uh, so that we can implement tokenizer and vectorizer. And then once we've built our simple predictive model, uh, I want to uh, educate you guys on how do you assess the quality of your model. So we'll go through uh, quite a few different uh, performance metrics so that you can say this is a good model or a bad model, uh, and we'll do that as part of the workshop. Um, but then, you know, machine learning never is, is a linear uh, process. Essentially, you're going to eventually get your predictive model and you're, you're going to assess the quality of it, but then you're going to want to know, how do I make this model better? Uh, and through this process, there are lots of design decisions, uh, and that results in a whole laundry list of things that you could possibly do to improve the model. Uh, and some of these steps actually take quite a bit of time. Uh, and so what I want to end the workshop with is talking about a few different ways uh, that you can decide uh, using a data-driven approach uh, on what you should put your time to to improve the model. Uh, and, that's, and, and through this workshop, we're going to create a, a final model that's going to result in an area under the curve of 0.7 to predict hospital 30-day readmission. I think this is a pretty good performance for a very basic model on bag of words, uh, and we're going to do it in a 90-minute window. Uh, just to give you some comparison, some of the state of the art in 30-day readmission uh, using lots and lots of data uh, has an AUC of 0.75. So we're able to get a pretty good baseline uh, that performs very similarly to the state of the art. Um, so we, uh, everyone who participates in the workshop will have the opportunity to build this model on top of the MIMIC-3 data set. Uh, so I, I will end there. I uh, hope to see you at ODSC West for the workshop titled Healthcare NLP with a Doctor's Bag of Notes. Thank you.